Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Good Time Show. It's Christmas. And so, as every Christmas should have, we should have a Christmas queen. And so, I bring to you, everyone, the Christmas queen of all, Amanda Ware. Oh, wow. Thank you. That's you like a that? great intro. Wow. Does anybody else call you the... Uh, I mean, the... my friends. But I don't know if it's been like... It's been official yet. My mom calls me that. The Christmas queen? Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah, it's cute. I love that. It's cute. You just, yeah. You talk to my mom? Have I you have been talking talk- to my mom? I have not talked to your mom. Because <laughs> <laughs> that is what she calls me. But my friends call me that too. It's cute. It's cute. It's great. It's true. It's probably true. It is true. Yeah. Um, how, um, how long have you been the Christmas queen? About five years. I've been about, uh, Hello Holidays is on, we're on, we just finished our fifth season. Um, and so I started five years ago and it's just been, it's been from since then. And, I, and I'm going to be very honest. I did not do a lot of homework oh, good. on That's this, better. which is That's better, better because, yeah. um, um, we got to know each other. We are once again at Blake Street. We are um, presented to you by Blake Street. Blake Street is a wonderful place that me and Amanda live. We do love it here. We love it here. There's a lot of people that visit. We live here. Yeah. Um, I met you. Obviously, it was during Christmas. We have a friend named Roland. Uh, But I did read somewhere that you were a school teacher. I was a school teacher. So we met through Roland, who is an incredible author. And I read his books when I was a school teacher because he's written like 30 books. He's Scholastic's his publisher. He's insane. So I knew Roland. Roland told me, you've got to meet my friend Damon. When we went to his book book release, you sat right beside me. I was like, this is meant to be. And another friend, Ify, Ify, was like, you need to meet Damon. And so when you sat by me, I was like, oh, I think that's, if that's what I think it is. No, 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 that's not, that's not what I thought. Because if people think you're a douche, they think I'm a douche. And so I'm cool being a douche if that's what a douche is. Yeah, we are. If you and I are douches, then like, oh, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like me and you have similar, uh, yeah, we're similar souls. We have similar energy. Mm -hmm. We are Mm -hmm. out there. We are a lot of fun. I like us. We love ourselves. We do love ourselves. I think people like us because yeah, well, we bring a lot of fun to the table. Well, when you love yourself, it's you just love people better. You just love people better. Okay, so you were a school teacher. What totally. what grade? Okay, so I've taught. Uh, I started out as a middle school teacher. That was my passion. Taught masters in reading. Um, then I taught college. Taught masters of college of reading for college. So I teach teachers how to be reading teachers. So it's a lot of that part. For I did that for about seven years, so I could stay home with my kids most. Work part-time. And then I went back and taught second and third grade. My daughter was in my class for two years. And so I was teaching third grade when I opened Hello Holidays. And I learned that first season, there's no way it was no, it was not going to be a side hustle. This was going to be, this was going to be big. And so I quit and went all in and here's where we are. Wow. So you're a smart girl on top of all this. I am a smart girl. I am a smart girl, and I'm going to tell. That's you... not. That's one thing I'm going to tell you that I have never. I never knew I was smart. I never thought I was smart, and I played that like card of the. I played that dumb blonde card for a long time because that's kind of what got me in the room, and I just now realized lately that like I'm way smarter than I think I am, and so that's been empowering for me. Well, you were teaching teachers. I was teaching teachers, but I, that was a very, that was a niche, right? That was a niche, and I was like, oh, people in the business world, they're so smart. Those people know words like mutual funds, and I don't know that. (laughs) I don't know those words. That's a hard word. Or those kind of things. So, like, well, I don't know that. So, uh, but I can tell you how a kid reads and what makes, you know, a kid be able to read at sixth grade, a better reader in fourth grade than they are in sixth grade. I could tell you that stuff, but I couldn't tell you. Could you make me a better reader? Financial. Um, I'm terrible. Are you? Oh, my God, you have no idea. It's, like, my only fear. Reading out Reading's loud? Only my re- reading out loud is my only fear. You know, I think you're not alone there. That is something that I learned early on when I was getting my master's. You don't ask kids to read out loud, and you don't do it, you know, popcorn style either. Yeah. That's cruel. It's real cruel there. I, I got really good at just improv, like, because I've said it in, about it in another podcast, but I was a special ed kid. Ah. So they would give me a lot of leeway, So and I had no problem performing and entertaining, so... I, of course, would bust out the cliff notes and try to do my best, but I was so hyperactive that I couldn't remember what I read and even in the cliff notes. So I would give these book reports and I would be so off base, but I would just go for it. I would just get up there 
And I'd be like, yeah, you know, and Becky. And they were like, there was no Becky. And I was like, yeah, whatever her name was. And I would just go into these things and the teacher would keep going, well, I don't think that was quite, you know, I don't think you really got all of it, Damon. <laughs> that was the interpretation. <laughs> but they, so, yeah, they would they would give me the interpretation leeway, and I think so, they just liked my ability oh. to just get up on stage. And you know, I've got a thing where I think if you're in special ed classes, you could probably be in gifted classes. There is a correlation there, and the wealthy people, very wealthy, when their kid has a learning disability, they put them in the gifted school, right? Like, right. there's something to that. There's something to kids who are. Have a special need. It's just if you can keep that sense of self-esteem, that's what's the hardest part. For it that. is. I I I had no problem being bad at school. Really, I you couldn't get me to skip school. I loved school. There was always <sighs> people there. It was like it was just <sighs> a warehouse of people that would listen to me. Wow. So I really loved school. I just didn't like to do any of the stuff that was there, really, uh, except yeah. for the stuff I like to do. See, I, I have mean, nightmares of going back to school. You, like didn't, you, had, you didn't like school? Uh-uh. Never. Oh, really? Now, I liked college, but not, I mean. But you're but so pretty now. Like, what, were I you wasn't not, were pretty. You not, I was were not you, cool. Were you one of those? I was not cool. I was just not pretty. I was not, I was super basic, and that was my insecurity. That book, Sarah Plain and Tall, I don't know if you remember that. It was about this basic girl. It was just simple. And everything. I'm just so basic. But I also knew I didn't belong there. Like, I also would look around and be like, I don't belong here. This is not my peak. I've not peaked here. Like, I knew. I knew, and I wasn't pretty. I wasn't. And, I, you know, changed for me. Changed for me. And um, when you start loving yourself, I think your insides get prettier, and maybe that kind of comes out of your outsides. Christmas. I love Christmas. Uh -huh. Christmas. Why do you love Christmas? Okay, I love – my mom is – why I love Christmas. I Another thing, my, the psyche, just studying and being in this business, moms bring the Christmas. And I have learned moms feel that's their, that is a lot of pressure for moms. So that's one thing I've learned. My mom brought Christmas for me. I bring the Christmas for my family. That is just most people, if you ask how they got to get their Christmas from their mom. My mom was very whimsical. She did the snow village. She'd go all out. We had lots of different color Christmas trees. And so I had a different color Christmas tree. When my sister, my sister lives in Tulsa and asked me to come help her decorate her Christmas tree. And I did. And there were these ribbons that my mom and I would shop for. And they were just like so expensive, right? Like I'm a teacher. Can't afford this stuff. This is, ex ex you know, too much to buy a ribbon for a Christmas tree at these nice stores. But this ribbon is just so much better than all the other ribbon. And it's so much more beautiful. And so my mom what and I would share. What is it about girls that know what ribbon feels I like? I know. And, well, and it's textile. Some... Oh, okay. not, oh, it just feels so good, like velvet and lush and patterns and glitter. Oh, it's just like, who would not want to work in the ribbon industry? It's just happy. So many patterns. <laughs> anyway, so I just get, oh, I just get so excited thinking about it. But anyway, <laughs> I, it is, it's, it is. So I started with ribbon, did it on my sister's tree. Her tree went viral on Pinterest. I mean, this is like seven, seven, eight years ago, 10 years ago, something stupid. Your sisters? My sister in Tulsa. So my sister got, she was like, Amanda, no one, you can't buy this stuff online. You need to, you need to have an e-commerce company and you need to sell it online. Like, just try. I blew her off a couple of years because I'm like, I'm not in sales. I'm a teacher. I'm in the noble. I'm in the noble world. I'm going to be noble. I'm not going to be a teacher because I'm not going to be going to be sales. A, a ribbon peddler. Yeah. I'm not going to be selling ribbon to my friends. That's some, Who's that little yeah. tot over there selling all that ribbon? Oh, that well, little, yeah. Who do you that think? That little ribbon hussy over there. Who does she think she is? <laughs> like, anyway, I told my husband. She was just a teacher. Now yeah. she's just slanging. Yeah. <laughs> for, that's for the, <laughs> you know, really there is a floral. The floral industry owns the ribbon. So fast forward, I say something to my husband, chat about it. My husband's in finance, uh, opposite of us. Um, and he goes, and he's not a risk taker. He's like, no brainer. No brainer. And when he said that, I was like, you know, like, okay. Anyway, we opened uh, um, November. Oh, so your husband. He he was like, you should totally do that. Well, you were like, this is so stupid. I shouldn't even Emily, do that. Yeah, and Emily I, is two years later. My Emily keeps yeah, mentioning Yeah, when a finance guy tells you it's it's a no-brainer. That's, right? that's when you know. Because my dad was an accountant. And yeah. Money scares me. Like, my, he, oh, so but my husband's like, an accountant. It's scary. Like, I, I, the only thing I get scared about is like doing accounting kind of stuff. It is scary. And that like is. he's going to yell at me. That is one thing I'm learning that. I'm I'm not that dumb. Like finances aren't that hard to understand. Like mutual fund is not a hard concept to understand if you just read about it and listen. 
Like, that's what I'm learning. And that's exciting to be like, all these things that I kind of thought were scary or too hard. Right. Not that hard. Not that hard. I wish I would have known that when I was 20. But right? that's okay. I wish my dad, I wish I could have broke, it wasn't his fault. My dad was an awesome man. He was yeah. the greatest guy ever. But there was that thing where I felt like, well, people told me it was impossible and you're not yeah. smart enough, blah, 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 oh, yeah. all that and kind of stuff. But then yeah. when you read read about it, it's like, you know, I mean, like all these guys in crypto right now, yeah, no yeah. offense guys that are in crypto, I'm sure it's going to make a billion I'm sure, go now. for it. Um, but, you know, it's all just sounds like a pyramid scheme, all of it. And you realize that like the more that people preach and whatever that it is just... If you get a bunch of people believing in it, then people, people buy the stock, it will go up and it, it's everybody's just guess. It's you know? true. It's true. So. Well, I also grew up and I raised, when I got married, I kind of immersed myself in a culture of people that were scarcity mindset and they were obsessed with saving. And so like I was always over the top compared to my friends because I didn't really care about saving. And well, it's not that big a deal. Like, I, I just, I don't know. I think we obsess over money a little too much. Ha not having it, bragging about how people save. It's just like, I don't know. Who cares? So anyway, I didn't have the money. My mom and I both would, like, cut this ribbon, put it on my sister's tree, opened up Hello Holidays in 2018. What a cute name. Right? Can oh you believe my it's my God. name? It's my name. Hello I'm so proud Holidays. of that name. Hello Holidays. Hello Holidays. It because what hello I can, holidays. Hello Holidays. It's a shop helloholidays.com, but um or shop hello holidays on Instagram, but hello holidays. And you know, there's so many avenues we can go with that. Because almost anything can be a holiday, right? Like we could celebrate that Damon and I saw each other and make that a holiday. Like that Which is a I find to be one of the best holidays out there. I know. I, I've seen Damon's a holiday. It's true. Anyway, so that's so that we started and people like it. They love it. it. Two years later, I was getting these calls and emails. Will you come decorate my tree in Montana? Will you come decorate my tree up in New York, L.A., whatever? And I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. But I would do it for like people who could mark, market for me or, you know, influencers or whatever. And then I would do it for a few clients that were persistent. And I'm still with those loyal, persistent clients and so I opened it up to say, is there anywhere anybody else that likes to side hustle and really good at decorating trees using our products? And I now have 60 Mary, we call them Merry Makers, which is adorable. And Merry Makers. Merry so Makers. Hello Holidays. Hello Holidays. And then we have Merry, and Merry Makers. Makers. And they're across the United States. So you can go to my website and say, you live in Dallas. Dallas, Texas are my people. Those Texas love Christmas. We do. You and do. they like lights and they like it big. Big. Big coach. I'm I'm Highland Park adjacent. Okay, okay. I I'm not wealthy enough to be Highland Park. Okay, I've done some trees I in Highland Park. I love me rich people. I love to go to a rich person's house and look at a rich person's tree and okay. enjoy the things that I don't have. Okay, good. Um, you enjoy. I do what the, I do the rich people's tree, or they have my stuff in their house, and then you get to see it. Yeah, that's I, exciting. Yeah, because, that's like the circle. Yeah, my mom retired from Neiman Marcus. So I grew oh, up yes. around like the Neiman Marcus Christmas tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These ornaments that are ridiculous. Like I I grew up seeing these ornaments that are like $300. And then oh, wow. back in the day, you could, um, they don't really do these sales like they did, but they had employee sales. And so my mom would be able to work these employee sales. Oh, she got and the so, better. Oh yeah, and they would mark these things like crazy down. It would uh -huh, be like 90% uh -huh. off plus an extra 30. Wow. So we I don't, would get my, these. My yeah. ornaments don't cost that much. Huh? My ornaments don't cost that much. No, well, the ones I sell. I actually was going to bring you one. I said I have one that's like a cup of noodles, and it says "Send Nudes." And I was going to give that to you because I just feel like you'd appreciate oh that. Oh my god! Isn't I that cute? So I'm going to bring it back to you. I'll find. I'll bring it tomorrow. Oh my god! Send to Blake nudes. Street. Oh, isn't that cute? Oh my god! It's clever. Clever. Yeah, and I am definitely. And I apologize, Aaron, for let me say this about you but um i am for sure the person that's probably like aaron loves to decorate and all this kind of uh -huh. stuff she was a little late this year she was a little late that's okay it's okay um totally we got our tree and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff it's a lot of pressure um, it is i think she gets she gets a little overwhelmed with the pressure and then I i'd like in. to fix that i'm a for bulldog women. too so i come in like yeah, and i'm yeah. like and I just, see i'd you know. like to fix that for women yeah if that's my like i want to fix that i want to make it where no nobody in the world feels stressed about decorating for christmas i don't know how to do that yet but i'm gonna do it it's that's the one thing that I never understood is that like it's Christmas, it's Thanksgiving. My mom would get so stressed about everybody and what was happening, setting up for Christmas, setting up for Thanksgiving. And what's really sad is that men truly, most men, I feel like I'm a little most, not on most, that, but most. like I, I'm pretty aware of yeah. like complimenting and all that kind of, uh -huh. but a, a lot of most guys that I know, 
really don't pay attention to what the wives are doing, what's happening in the background, Uh like Thanksgiving Uh can happen, all this work happened in the kitchen, not saying that women, I'm the one who cooks during Thanksgiving, so let's not, I'm not trying to throw that, but, and then they'll eat and guys will be like, yeah, it was pretty good, turkey was dry. You know? Yeah, it's true. And then, and then you go watch the football and game. And like you're yeah, crushing yeah, yeah. them and my mom is yeah, stressed yeah, yeah. out, but my mom's not enjoying Thanksgiving. And it's like, yeah. that's the problem with like these holidays. It's like they should just be for just having fun. If the turkey burns, great. Like, exactly. Who gives a it, I want it to be that way. That would be the dream. But it is a lot of pressure on moms to recreate. I think this is my theory. I have not read this. I love that we're drinking, by the way. This is know, the first cheers. guest that I've had. Cheers. That we drink. Uh, okay. Yeah, cheers. Yeah. I, my theory on that is moms <clears throat> want their kids and f- husbands to experience the magic of their greatest Christmas memory growing up. Whatever that is, that greatest nostalgia, whatever that is. And nostalgia is good. It can be bad because it can hold you back because you just, you can rile people up with nostalgia. But then it's, they want that so bad. So every year it's the quest for the perfect, best Christmas ever. Once you get that, it might not be the best Christmas ever. And maybe I'm not going to have ribbon on my tree this year because it's too expensive. Or maybe I'm not. I'm going to add next year. That it, It's just to love it where it's at. It's, it's hard. But there is something to that. And I feel like I could be wrong. Women feel the pressure more than men. 100%. And I don't know why that is. It's well, like, I kind of do. I, well, I don't, but I do. I'm just going to say my opinion. Go. I oh, yeah. Know. Mine's all opinion. I have no um, I think there's just like guys with sports or guys with everything else, right? Like I built a world in reality TV. I mean, you know, my world is about reality TV. The yeah. reason why people love The Bachelor and all that uh-huh. too is that you girls love to talk some garbage on each other. Like you girls oh. can watch The Bachelor and be like, oh my God, look at those shoes. Oh my God, look at that jacket. Like- there is a competitive nature to people. And I think that, you know, when it comes to holidays to other holidays, like people are like, oh my God, I gotta, I gotta compete with and like, why are you competing with what's her name? Like who cares? But That's, like yeah, it's but it's really... an impossible thing to like, I mean, it's impossible to see one of your Christmas trees, take for instance, and you're just like, who gives like you saw how yeah. how terrible it was it was a cute tree. It's a cute tree. I decorated I'm never my mom's Christmas say tree. Trees bad. It was um it was totally the worst ribbon job ever, but no, it was it's okay. super cute. You didn't have my ribbon either. No, my I, ribbon's yeah. a lot easier to work with. It is. It's easier than anywhere else you're going to buy a ribbon. It's going to be easier because Walmart, Holiday, Hobby Lobby, Sam's. I'm sorry. Their ribbon's cheap. It's not as easy to work with. Mine's designer friendly. You know, I, oh gosh, Damon, I didn't know we were going to get into this, but I, when you say women are competitive, I think they are. I don't think all women are. It's not something I struggle with. Jealousy. No, I don't struggle with it. It's not all it. women. Let's be it's very clear. It's not all women. I'm, 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 it I'm is, stepping but in it, very, you very, are. you know, I'm, yet, stepping, I'm tiptoeing in a very right. dangerous world. It's a, You are, and it is a huge stereotype. Type. It has definitely got truth, and I hope that maybe that's something I can change, right? Like where I can say, I can, if I can say, Damon, I love your tree, and if you want me, you want to put the Hello Holidays touch on next year, we'll do it next year. But I'm not thinking you your tree sucks. I'd put your tree in my house, and I'd be proud of it because you did it. Well, I think the Charlie Brown Christmas thing is totally like if you can't do a good one, do a really yes! bad one and just put tons like, of lights just on it. Own it, okay. Just, like, own I, I, it. Like yes. the crappiest. Like sometimes go in the roof. Like hey, I got no money. Great, just get a stick outside. Yeah. Put it up. Put it in totally. the thing. Like I mean, in college, we would just like you know we would find anything and we would just Aww. we would just do stupid things. It would just be ridiculous, Simple. but it doesn't matter no, because it's, it's really about like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you said, like when your mother's ruined her life trying to make sure everything was perfect, when really all I wanted her to do was have a good time and right. be funny. Like, right. you know, because she's the funniest just, person yeah. I've ever known. Just be so it's you. just like, you just, show up. just show up. Just show up. Just show up. Um, I'm hoping that changes. I hope that we we can be more mindful. Being more mindful at Christmas is a huge, right now, it's whatever date it is, you can't make, you can't make Christmas 21st. Day any better than what you're going to, what it's going to be right now. Like, you're telling me better than it's going to be right now. So if we just like say, I'm not going to try too hard. I'm not going to compare myself to so-and-so. I'm not going to try to impress her because it just does. It's really not worth it. The stress. I want to bring up something that I feel like has happened. Speaking of changing Christmas, (laughs) 
and speaking of the stress of Christmas, okay, there is a thing that happened, and you tell it, it at least it's happened in my ether, right? So, okay, okay. and I feel like this happened like twenty five years ago, maybe twenty years ago, or it just keeps happening in generational, and like, and that is the gift card phenomenon oh, that yeah. has made Christmas crap. Uh -huh. Excuse my language, <laughs> but um, gift cards has legitimately made, and it, well, first it was gift cards, and then it became this thing where, um. Okay, so I've got nephews, you know, you got the kids and blah, 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 right? And then so in the beginning, like, it's the young kids and we're like, whatever, well, everybody's into it. Like, I'm giving totally. the sister, the brother, like, we're giving gifts yeah. and whatever. And um, my brother gave me the worst gift ever. I'll get into that a little bit later. It's really funny. Um, but, you know, we would exchange gifts, right? And I remember I got in trouble one year because I, I bought my nephew who was super young and I did buy him, like, triple X underwear like okay, from walmart funny. but i had a gift card of money but i just wanted him to open the gift card and open this i'm doing that for my underwear. nephew he will cry yeah He'll and cry. he cried and <laughs> he totally cried. but everybody got mad at me i go guys he cried this is hysterical oh my gosh, I'm but like doing he's that. crying with like, these I, huge I'm underwear the perfect nephew to do that yeah for. so like so like I, I so i think so so there became this thing where like and my mom still preaches it like legitimately at the at the tip of her she was like well you know we're not giving kids you know the older the, the adults aren't giving presents this year the adults aren't giving presents here which is fine in the beginning uh -huh. right because you still have the focus of the little kids and they're still yeah, little yeah, kids yeah. right well now and then you get to that we're on awkward stage where like the you know the 15 year old still like uh -huh. going oh my god uh -huh. oh my god and you're like okay enough dude yeah. you're just really annoying right you're now lying. because the you're eight year old's like you're you're out and like the six yeah. year old is still killing it right and you're only <laughs> focused on him but he's still like look at me and you're like no dude you got pimples and you're just it's you're true, out you're done I'm giving you gifts and we're sure we're <laughs> lying. We're lying about the whole Christmas. Thing. Like we're all in a big lie, right? So, but you're starting to get phased out. You're about to go from like, hey, here's a hundred bucks to uh, here's a pair of socks. You know, <laughs> it, it's the transition. Because now it's my terrible. You but my no my nephews. It's the giving up of innocence. It's the losing of innocence. It's terrible. It sucks so the bad. loss of innocence is a sad thing. It's a it's, it's a, a sad thing. It's a crap deal. It is, and it it's starts. A, it didn't start Christmas. It kind of starts with Christmas. Like every parent knows when your kid learns of the truth it's just the beginning of the end it's the sex talk next it's the sex talk next mm -hmm. god you hope they had sex before they figured out the, the lies of Santa, the I'm talking about Santa. Christmas. Yeah, no, I mean, that's the know. first. Yeah, they, that's yeah. first. Well, you hope. Yeah, I'm pregnant. What? He's not coming for real. <laughs> you hope that that's the first. That, yeah, seriously. Oh golly, because if oh, you find out, you find out heavens. he's, you know, you find out about Santa after. Oh it's boy, true. that's it's a really true. bad deal. That's true. It's a good least, point. You know, good point. Or, or maybe yeah. not. Maybe it is. It's the loss of innocence. It's hard. And I give cards. It's it's, it's a tough but, one. But, but so, I also don't want... Okay, so this is interesting. So my husband grew up with his aunt, grandparents. They'd give him certain gifts, but they would give him crafts they made. Like his grandma would give him see, like... that's popsicle, cute. Popsicle sticks. We'll see. Chad like grew up that you just say thank you. Like he's not going to use or anything, but thank you. That's so sweet. Where I grew up, like we would laugh if you tried to give us a popsicle stick gift. 100%. But at least I remember, like, here's the thing. My uncle... Would give me socks every year, and like, but every year at least I went home. Was like, my uncle gave me those crappy ass socks again. At least I have a story, it's right? True. There's like it's at true. least a Chad, story. My husband didn't know it was a story. Like he didn't know that was an interesting fact. He thought that was normal. Now, and, and I'm like, no, that's like so sweet, and that you thought that was the norm. That everybody's grandma gave them popsicles, you know, like crafts. Oh, that's, that's super sweet. Cute. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that's what I mean. Like everyone stopped. Giving gifts. Yeah. And I think that this is a really bad thing that we're getting into. And I wish we could stop it in our family. Yeah. Like I wish I could and I was just preaching my friend, my 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 best friend. She was like, Well, I don't decorate anymore. Like he doesn't appreciate it. And I go, oh. Don't do it for him. Do it for you. Yeah, and then let you everyone then, you this, should be decorating yeah. whatever. I go, sure. but there is no like you have just I'm gonna preach to everyone. You have 12 months walking around. And if you see the dumbest thing in the world, it could be $3, $2, 5 bucks. Just buy it, wrap it up, and give it to them. Because, and then when they unwrap it, it could be the worst gift ever. But it, when they unwrap it, they go, oh, my God, this is so stupid. Now you have a talking point. I just thought of the best podcast for us to do next year. Okay. We, we need do to do – uh, we're doing this next year. You're gonna, I'm going to be back on your podcast, and it'll yeah, be like okay. gifts. Gifts for the different – 
we'll do a gift thing. Like I give these chocolates from Markham and Fitz to my my BFFs, like in Bentonville. Mm -hmm. It's a good gift. You should do a gift show. I would love to do a gift show. You I'll would? do any kind of shows. You will? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I want to. I want to somehow do a whole TV show here. I don't know what we're going to yeah. do yet. I'm trying to figure this out. Ah. One thing I did do that I thought was fun. I'm a little creative. You You're know? very so, like, creative. So when it comes to um, like my nephews, instead of giving them money, I you know in, in an envelope or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. I went and got those like those the um, the candies that you get at at um, the movie theater that are yes. always in boxes. So I I would tape the that's money good. to those and then I wrap that's that. That's good. So at least the kids could then go. I got the hot tamales. Oh yeah, I hate hot tamales. I got nerds and like yeah, so. Yeah, that's good. You know, we should I'm always, hide the money. It's we should all be about, hiding. It's all the money. about creating conflict, guys. It's true. <laughs> it's, I, okay, so this year their wrapping paper had big chicken butts on it, and it said, "Guess what? So inappropriate, and it's so funny." Is it though? It well in a classy family. Will you family, be friends with gives, somebody that's not inappropriate? I, Chad's whole family's not inappropriate, and I love them. They're just good people. They, they okay, do, they, yeah, they do get popsicle steps. Or yeah, they're yeah. sweet. They're oh my good God, people. These people. Are like those kind of. They're people, the right? goodest people in the world. That's but why like, he I'm, married you. It is you're, the fun, you're the funnest person he ever. He never. He tells me that all the time. He just had no idea. I know he didn't. They, they didn't have any idea either. Let's get. Let me let me finish this. Okay. Off. Okay. Um, I think that having fun at Christmas, like, why not? Why make everything so serious? That like, oh my god, it's got to be, uh, like, I think buying someone a toilet seat and just wrapping it up and just giving them a toilet seat for no reason is hysterical to me. Now, not everybody has the ability. I to don't do that. want you to ever give me that for a present. I oh, won't no. think it's funny. I just won't. I guess I'm not that funny because I don't like that. I don't like you. Okay, maybe you're right. Don't See, give me this a is white the problem. elephant. This is my problem too. Don't give me junk. Oh, if you, don't you like gave that. me like a squatty potty, those things that's useful that you put on your toilet, like that might be like funny, but I'm gonna still I use that. I was a that. squatty potty for a while. You were? Oh, I loved it. We need to get them to sponsor your podcast. I think they sponsor squatty lots of podcasts. Dude, I met I the do. squatty potty guy actually. Have you? Yeah. I do. I mean, it's just like I've, I, I think it was a white elephant gift, and it was one I got to keep, and I was happy about it. But like, you give me a toilet seat, unless it's like heated or works, like well, yeah, special. I mean, it would be like you know, I mean, oh, it wouldn't be just like one that you no, got like from a, the junkyard. Like maybe one of those, like a bidet, you know, that makes your life so much. better. You would never buy someone a bidet. That'd be too expensive. That's not. No, they have the cheap ones now. I mean, they got they got the Amazon bidet. You know okay, I mean? maybe I would laugh at that. I would really <laughs> laugh at it if you gave it to my mother in law, because I feel like her response so would be conservative. Oh boy. And she would laugh, and I just think I'd get a kick out of that. It'll wake you up. That's for sure. That's for sure. It'll wake yeah. you up. Good um, morning. Um, okay, Christmas. You have your own store, yeah. and it's not just a store where you're reselling stuff. You have your own products. Like so, you, so we give me this sell, whole thing. Okay, here's what everything I sell. Anything you see on a Christmas tree, I sell it. So we've got ornaments, florals, and ribbon. I sell anything on a Christmas tree. Now, I try to sell stuff see, other seasons. It's harder for me. I'm hoping to break out into party supplies and do, you know, party stuff like soon. But, yeah, I sell anything you see on a Christmas tree. I have it, um, and that's my sales. That's what I sell. And so now I'll do trees. All from I do In August, my team and I do trees every week, and we take pictures of them. And you can buy. A lot of times people will just say, I want everything on this tree, and we can box that up and ship it to them. Or they say, okay, I want this ornament off this tree. But we have a whole bunch of trees that you can look at and um, see what style you want. Just like the one at Blake Street is going to be weirder colors. And then some people like traditional. It's just, that's kind of the fun part. If you see a Hello Holidays tree, it is not going to be basic. It's not going to be what you see um, when you go to Pottery Barn. It's going to be a little more extra. It's going to be, you're going to see a print on there you wouldn't have expected to put see on your tree. It's a little different. And we've created that in the last five years, our own brand. And people say, oh, that's a Hello Holidays tree. It's got an online presence. That's why it went viral on Pinterest, because you don't see a lot of them. There's a lot of people out there that love to decorate a tree. And then there's people that just don't want to decorate yeah. a tree. And that's one reason why you're making good uh, money right now, okay. because yeah. there's some people that don't really like to decorate it's trees, true. and it takes a lot of time. And yeah. It's, and, also, it's an art. Like they, you, yeah, they you, wanna, it's a really like I can't can do it. it. It can be an art. We have merry makers. That's kind of how if I can get people to just try, it's really a lot easier once you've done it a couple of times. The people in you know one of the largest cities in the world compared to the people in Bentonville. Oh, the comparing like moving to Hollywood. Yeah. To Bentonville, Arkansas. Yeah, yeah, night, yeah. Which, 
this town is magical. So when it comes to this town, I grew up in Texas. People are super sweet there. But it was still a big ta- big city. I lived in the middle of Dallas. I didn't definitely lived like in the middle of Dallas. I definitely am a city kid. And then I moved to Hollywood, California, right in the middle of the most dynamic place in Hollywood. Um, and I love it. I'm not the guy that's going to be here and be like, those stupid Hollywood people. Are do- oh, I love, love Hollywood. Oh, I love the culture. I love the diversity. The I yes. love it. I love it. It's a mess right now with all the homeless stuff happening. Um, but I still love it. You know, I love Hollywood. Um, but I came here and you can feel the energy. You can feel all the stuff. You can feel a culture being brought in, right? It's so Ah, young. Like it's like what's happening here. I try to explain to people because you know, people, all my friends are like, you moved to Arkansas. And I'm like, yeah, I moved to Arkansas. But this little bubble of, 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 you know, with, with this, this Bentonville, Arkansas, they really are trying to make it diverse. They're really trying to make it a welcome community and all this stuff. I've never met so many nice people. I also never met so many people that are encouraging. Now here at Blake street, I think it's kind of a little, even more of a bubble where you're in a world where there's a bunch of creative people mm-hmm. and there's not two of me here. There's not, I mean, I guess yeah, there's, there's, there's the, you know, the Mars have their reality show here, but you know, I do a lot of crazier reality shows than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but there's, 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 you know, it's really interesting to see a town that is so young at such a very, I mean, it's an infant of a city, but there's so many cool things that have just started popping up. I mean, it's only like three years old. In my opinion, I know people are like, Oh, 10 years, but it's, it's, in a year and the a half, the gas pedal pushed just a little bit ago. Just a little bit ago. Yeah. So, I don't feel like there's anything I'm missing when I'm totally. living here. I really don't. I think that like I I feel like there's so much great opportunity. Mm-hmm. I think that like I probably wouldn't have done this show anywhere else. You know, at first I was trying to figure out how I was going to do the show and make it more broad and out yeah. there for other people. But now I realize that I just want to focus on this town and realize that like you know as this show kind of keeps developing and if if people seem to like me and hopefully they do that they like do. that that this thing will take a life of its own but I think you know focusing on Bentonville and meeting the people that are building this town and the people that are kind of in this community that are doing incredible things for the world totally I mean the walls are the okay. change of the world the it's change crazy. of the world that is where I'm at before before I came to Blake Street maybe I mean so not very long ago I didn't realize how many entrepreneurs and like full on do gooders there are here. Like there are yeah. people at Blake I have a friend that at Blake Street who is like literally putting a patent, like getting FDA approved a drug that she owns that w- it will cure people from PTSD. Like that is what she does when she works at Blake Street. These are these people are, you know, there's a green beret that sits beside me who, you know, is working on funding for veterans, green beret veterans who can't I mean the amount of people here that are doing World cause things are absolutely insane. It is fascinating. And you're not going to find that anywhere else. It, they're just not, it's not possible. And that's, that's got to be, that's what's been fascinating is it's a concentrated group of people who want to, to go bigger than what they saw in their own childhood. They got yeah. bigger dreams, bigger mindsets, bigger worldviews. And that Bentonville's not always been that way. Yeah, I don't know what it's been like before this. But yeah, definitely I, wasn't like but that. But I will before. tell you, like, even though as I'm going through the world and trying to figure it out, like, yeah. I know I tell people stories. I know that that's what I'm really yeah. good at. But as I'm trying to start a company, I'm trying to start, well, I'm starting a um, a creative agency where I'm doing different things and telling stories, whether it's a brand or whatever. Yeah. Um, and also trying to produce production stuff and yeah. develop TV shows. and But people are just so encouraging. Encouraging, like people yes. are just no one's here knocking me, you know, mm-hmm. in Hollywood you Because tell we people, believe in our town. Yeah. We the people who live in Bentonville believe in Bentonville. We believe in what it can do. We believe in where it's going and I believe in my town and I believe in the people in it. I believe in you. I believe in where what you're at now and I believe in where you're going. And that's the, a mutual respect that this town is creating in its culture. Is that we believe in where you're at now. And we believe in where you're going. Agreed. And that's a culture Great. I want to be a part of. And people are sweet. I find these people are sweet. These... Is uh, I've got a I've got okay. Okay, there's some bitches. The there. word "sweet" to me is becoming. It's a word. I'm just learning. I'm wrestling it with it. Just in my oh, re- I grew up to be sweet. Girls were supposed to be sweet and just sweet. That's your job. Be sweet and keep your mouth shut. 
And I'm learning the people who are sweet. This is when guys, you've opened Pandora's box yes. and you just have to I'm, sit Yeah, there. I'm just not the sweet. I am kind. I will. I, I am kind. I'm good, but I'm not sweet. And I'm learning like people who are really sweet to me at first. I can't tell if they have got this inner anger in them because I will see them at basketball games. They're so sweet. And then I'll see them at basketball games. Like you oh, can. Oh, yeah. See, you have the kid thing. You see yeah. the world. I'm like, who are them. you? Or they're really sweet. And I realize. That's all they know. That's like what's gotten them in the door is that they just play this really sweet, innocent card. And that's what's gotten them in the door. They never lost their innocence. They still believe. And it's, and I'm struggling with that as a woman in, in a leadership role. If I say leadership role or in a role where I'm with more leaders in my day to day, I'm learning maybe being sweet wasn't the number one value system that. I'm going to keep going with, or am I going to trust all the time? I did a TikTok where I did the five things as a Christmas tree decorator I would never do. And I said, the one I said, I'm talking people, I got more hate for that than I got all through my three well, years of junior high. the picture. Three years of junior high, more hate in this comment, these comments. I said, if as a Christmas tree decorator, I would never... Buy a live tree. I because I'm a decorator. We it's they're a mess, they're hard to decorate, all the things. So I would always buy a oh fake God, tree. I'm so excited to meet you. Right. We I have I was an asthmatic, you know, I was a fat kid with asthma. Like the only thing you know what would kill me quicker than anything is a live Christmas, Christmas tree. tree. You put a live well, Christmas tree in, I'd Well, I mean, okay, die. so apparently but, but now I'm it okay. will either kill kids with asthma or saying you don't want to decorate a live Christmas tree is gonna kill me with words because TikTok people went freaking nuts. The good news is it made the algorithm higher. So I got more views, more likes, more saves. So in TikTok, if you get a controversial and I probably need to go that's, do another one. That's literally my business. I do this. But like, I don't think that's that controversial. The people who make choices like that when they're agitated are probably not going to grow much for a while. They're, okay, that, so what, that's give me some of these comments. Okay, so, so comments so, were so, quick. So you, so you truly mm -hmm. think that buying a fake tree is better? And that, is I that do. I mean, I don't give, I don't care. Go buy your live trees. I think they're so cool. They're pretty. They smell good. Whatever. What was the meanest thing somebody said to you on TikTok? Well, you know, I, you know, I didn't read the comments after the first oh, okay, 200. Good. All right. First well, 200, fine. it was, what, who do you think you are? Why would you write, who are these people? This girl, that her tree looks terrible. Don't yuck someone's yum. Um, don't yuck someone's yeah, yum. Yeah, I don't like being told that because I don't yuck anybody's yum. Like, I don't do that. I don't yuck your yum. Why are you saying that? You don't know me. And um, then I was like, the rest of these comments, it also made it where... Well, people are like, oh, it's so cute. That's so pretty. I love this. It's also like, okay. Well, I mean, I don't, I'm not going to, that's not going to feed me either. So if those other comments don't feed me, the nice ones can't either. And that kind of is sad. That's a sad place where the, you know, the good comments aren't going to help my, hurt my ego. Neither are the bad comments either. So that's kind of a sad place to be. But it makes me more empowered where I don't need it. I don't need that outward affirmation. We now really I like it. We've gotten into a sad Christmas, haven't we? We are into a sad No, Christmas. this no, is a good Christmas. Christmas is, good Christmas is always good. What is your favorite thing? Do you have any big plans for Christmas? What is the, what are the big okay, plans for Christmas? Okay, we have the best, most fun Christmas tradition with my family on Christmas Eve. Are you ready for it? Yes. We, my help, my family. And am I coming? To, oh my gosh, my family would love you. You would love my family. So my family meets in Tulsa and we stay at my sister Emily's house and we all get dressed up and we go and get one of those big limousine like those big party buses and we go around look at the lights we listen to music and we sing carols and we take really fun photos and then we come back and we eat the leftovers from dinner and then we wait for Santa to come and you can hear him and his reindeer on the roof we can hear him on the roof and the lights and all that you see him in the windows then we go and Santa has come and everybody has one present from Santa on Christmas Eve and then we exchange photo, I mean, exchange gifts. See, that's what I mean. It's so happy. It's like the happiest the night in the world. Thing. Like you do the whole thing. So a friend of mine whose father is extremely famous. I'm not going to talk about who he is, Why? but whatever. Because, oh, well, this it's that's wrong. Well, I'll tell you off the record. But for two days, he plays a Christmas character and never breaks character. I'm obsessed. And he's tell a, me more. Yeah, he Mike, is. Like, yeah, he gets into what character? Like Jack Frost, no, or no, like, no. or elf. like Elf, uh, or oh whatever. Gosh. Like whatever. Um, oh, and by the way, I met the guy that actually wrote the movie Elf, and that was a 
crazy experience. And what was he like? He was awesome. He, his name was uh, he Birnbaum. Funny? He no, not at all. He was like, he was a nice guy. But my buddy, my one of my best friend was a screenwriter. He got this incredible deal from Disney right out of college. And there were three people that get this fellowship program a year. One of them, he got the job because he wrote the movie Elf, sold it for forty thousand dollars before he got the job. That was way before Will Ferrell did the thing this guy was legitimately waiting on a multi-million dollar check because the movie because will ferrell and all of a sudden became a blockbuster hit that made so much money that he was actually like right out of college he was waiting on a couple million dollar check to like come through his first one of his first movies that ever sold and what else that's amazing yeah what other movies did he write besides elf who birnbaum i don't have no idea oh. i've only met him once i met birnbaum one time and he was a really nice one of the nicest everybody people. loves elf yeah Everybody, I mean, yeah, most I people are going to say that's their I favorite just movie. It. I literally just watched it. Hilarious. It's hilarious. That's energy. That's some good energy right yeah. there. Yeah. If I screwed your story up, or mom, um, we haven't seen each other in 20-something years, so, you know, whatever. Um, He'll be listening to this podcast. Yeah, it is what it is. Do you feel like Christmas has changed? Anything pre-social media, anything to us is just richer and more full and more flavorful and more robust and now with social media, it's watered things down because you just don't get the full experience like we did when we were kids without phones. It just does. So I think it's changed that. I think it's changed this. In my world, it's good. For sales, it's great because people want to outdo each other. They want to go bigger and better and they don't, you can only go where you, where you know to go. So on social media, when you're seeing all these beautiful trees, I didn't know people could have pretty trees when I was a kid. I, I didn't know that was a cool thing. I thought... What was cool is just having your family ornaments. My grandmother had cardinals all over the tree. I thought that was just like a personal preference. Now, your Christmas tree says something about you because you're going to post it and it's going to be part of your identity and you're going to share it and you want, and people ooh and all over that stuff. So they, I think things have changed. I would like to say that anything pre social media is just a different experience than after our lives now different. I don't know if that's good or bad. I'll, I also still think it might be some of the best and worst times of people's whole year. It's not in between. It's just not in between. It's either the best time of the year or the worst. You know, you see people in these perfect Christmases and uh -huh. people are like, oh, my life sucks or whatever my, you know, whatever. Because Christmas, like you said, Christmas is like, it's the worst because and if you are someone that really misses that person, right? Like my oh. mom, my mother, my my best friend misses oh. her father, and she really has a hard time celebrating because everything reminds her of the thing that she had with her father. And like I just do the opposite. I've always my mom just laughs if you ever if you ever had an inkling of like if you opened yourself up, my mom had a joke for it. Like you know, so like in a good way. Like yeah. I appreciate it. Some people didn't appreciate it. But the minute you show vulnerability, my mom would come in, whoa, pow, and oh, we'd, yeah. she'd hit you with some funny, you know? Um, and that's kind of how I think that I've always lived. And just like you said, a toilet seat, it's not everybody's, you know what I mean? It's not everybody's cup of tea. Like I just went, in yeah. fact, I just went wheeling through my mom's independent living facility, like looking for her in like her electric cart. Instagram. Yeah, it, it was, was a very, that's it was, hilarious. It was very funny, but people funny. in there were like, this is my place of eating. Yes. You know what I mean? That was very serious people. Yeah. And I forget that I'm always funny or I always think I'm funny. You bring the jolly. That was I some, try. They I needed try. that. Um, but Christmas is tough. Like you said, like you see these beautiful Christmas trees, you see all these kind of things. People feel like they have to keep up with the Con Joneses no. and all that kind of stuff. But it, you know, Christmas could be a place where it's hard. You know, you yeah. realize that like all the things that you're missing and all that kind of stuff. And I think Christmas kind of has a moment of like, I guess you always should, Christmas should remind you that you're always trying to find the joy. Totally. Is that? Totally. I, just a reset. And you know, like I said, if you have a tree with just lights, that's beautiful. If you beautiful. just put lights on a tree. No, Christmas is only what you make it. It's your energy. But I, man, those people who have deaths in their family or people hurting in your family, Oh, that's hard. And at the holidays, it's even harder. And that's, I think that's the pressure of parents and moms and family members to say, this is going to be a hard Christmas. So I'm going to try to make it even more magical. But there is this idea that if we make it more special, if we have the best desserts and the best food and the best gifts and the best, you know, whatever, you know, I, I was speaking of, I'm changing the subject here, but Damon, 
I was not invited to very many Christmas parties this year. I'm going to have a Christmas party. I had one last year. I'm going to have one this year, but I'm going to a Christmas party on the 23rd. Yet, that's the only party I'm want to know, and this is just, why are people not having more Christmas parties? That's, Hello Holidays has this thing of like, invite them over. Like, your house is never going to be prettier than it is at Christmas. Invite them over. I, I really like to entertain. I'm super excited about building my house and doing that. It's are you a, building? Yeah, I'm downtown? trying. Yeah, I'm building downtown. I, I probably should own a dating agency. Huh. Like, I could okay, literally, okay. like, creating dates for people. Because, you know, it's the bachelor of it all, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah. people are like, do they really fall in love? I'm like, yeah, bitch. They all fall in love. Excuse my language. Okay. But but yeah, it's good. yeah, they all fall uh, in love. Yeah. Like you're sitting in a jacuzzi. It's... I give you champagne. I make this incredible date that's a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two hot people with good bodies sitting in a jacuzzi. All of a sudden, you're like, you're like oh, I don't even care about this person. Whatever. And then you make out and you're like, oh, that was kind of nice. I know. And then you eat a true. piece of cheese and you're like, oh, that was kind of nice. Yeah. And then you drink a little more wine and get kind of a little bit more drunk and then you make out again. Oh, and you're like, well, maybe I do really like this person. Yeah. And then you take them away and you don't let them see for each other for two days. And then oh. everybody falls in love. And then yeah. they make out with the next person. They're like, wait, that doesn't feel right. And then everybody falls in love. Are we all just simple? Basic? Everybody's simple. Everybody's simple. Everybody likes the same stuff. We like happiness. We like comfort. We like respect. We like. We like to be we like, adored. We, we like, like to be yeah. adored. And we like to like. And we like safety. Safety. Totally. Safety. Yeah, it's a hard thing to come by. Yeah. yeah. That's good. And then you have Christmas to really make it up. You know what That's I mean? Hard, it's yeah. like you screwed up the entire for 11 months. You got, you got Christmas. Christmas to make it up. How can I brand that? How can I tagline that? Your year sucked. You got Christmas to make it up. I think you did. did. That might be it. Yeah, I'm going to brand that, man. That's good. I'm going to tagline that. This is being this is being honest and raw and vulnerable. Ta talking about the truth. Yeah. Yeah. I, it is a jolly time for me. It's very rarely did you do, sad, did you, but did, I'm aware. Have you, have you talked about any of this stuff on your last podcast? No. Oh, no, no, no. I've never. We've never talked about the psyche. I've written about it in some, there's been some news outlets that have written a little bit and quoted me on that, that I've said that it's a, there's a psyche to it, but. Psyche to what? Psyche to Christmas? Psyche to Christmas. There's a psyche. Oh, it's give it emotional. to give me that. Give me that real quick. Well, just, I can't, we, yeah. I've, I mean, um, I know we have it. Like, just give me, just. The psyche of Christmas is that, you know, if you had a childhood where, you Christmas was the most volatile time of the year because your family couldn't get along, or m most people had good childhoods had really great Christmases because they. And like I said, I think there's a lot of moms do that, and so all that to say, there is a desire to make Christmas a fix-all, a happiest time of the year. It's warm and cozy. It's jolly. It's joy. It's merry. It is all the Yuletide. It's it's a happy time. It's the good food. It's the it's the comfort. I mean, there is nothing more comfortable than things that you eat at Christmas time. Cookie parties, ornament parties, all the things. There's always parties. There happiness that comes at Christmas, and that's what people people need at the end of the year. It's celebrating Christianity, which or celebrating anyone's religion, celebrating the birth of Jesus. All that brings. A nobleness to it, a goodness to it that makes up for the part of being a little greedy. Okay. Am I right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I mean, like, I really do celebrate the fat, the fat, totally, the fat guy in yeah. a red suit more than I celebrate anything else. And I really don't separate them. I think there's like a, you know, I mean, I really do, I do separate church and state. Um, I really just kind of just enjoy Christmas. I get for it. Christmas, and I think that's and okay. Don't. But in the uh, South, it is a huge part of Christmas. Right, the nativity you know, it is, scene. It is, it is. and that, and I respect that too. I respect that. I like that. There's a, I mean, there, there's a lot of rituals, a lot of traditions, a lot of things that if people don't do on Christmas Eve or their whole year feels off. Well, I think that's, that's, I think that's what I, that's what I, that's what I want to get back into my family is that there's been this huge push of like to get rid of traditions of all totally. kinds where it's like, let's not give gifts anymore. It's too that's, difficult. I think that's, and I'm gen, like, and I'm I like, think that's our generation. Yeah. Gen Z's doing that. Yeah, like, it's not millennials. It's not Gen X. Yeah. Like, or I, no, no, we're Gen X, aren't we? I don't even know. We're Gen X. Gen Z's not doing this. Millennials. Millennials and Gen Z, Gen X, I think they're doing that. I think they're saying, let's do stuff new because we're sick of what was old. And now people are going back to, okay, let's do some Let's traditions. have fun. Yeah. Let's have fun. Like let's it have doesn't fun. Whatever, whatever your Christmas is, whether you're religious, yeah. great, be religious. If you're not religious, just right. do fat guy in a suit. Like, yeah. 
whatever it is. So, you know, like give what, back. It should be a time where your family did something to give back. Right. That should be a part. That should be everybody's Christmas tradition, along with sec- decorating the tree. Is how did you give back to the people that, or give back to anybody? My daughter. Well, I'm not going to brag. I don't want to be braggadocious, but my daughter was like. Mom, the the janitors at our school are so nice. They stand behind the trash cans and kids throw things in that are recyclable and they put their hands in there and they put it in recycle and they say thank you to these junior high kids who do not care. Those are the people that at Christmas time we can give back to. And she knows that. She's 12, 13. We know that. Putting that into practice at Christmas is what makes us feel good. That brings way more joy than a Christmas tree. Am I wrong? No, I think that that's really and it's what not, it's... And some, it's awkward for people to do in June to give a gift to somebody, but it's not awkward at Christmas. It's easy. There's no excuse not to do it. And it doesn't need to be give the person at Starbucks a free Starbucks because they were going to buy the Starbucks anyway. Go give it to somebody that wasn't going to do the Starbucks. Give it to the kid that or the person that's not going to be able to buy the Starbucks. That's kind of my, another one of my... I love, High horses. I love it. Like, do you have like a vision for the future of Christmas? Do you do you I do. Okay, boom. Oh, okay. thank you for asking. Okay. I, the, man, um, I, hold on. Oh. Hello holiday Hello Holidays. Hello right? Holidays. Hello Holidays vision for the future of Christmas. Brought to you by the Good Times. Yeah, Show. yeah, yeah. Future of Hello Holidays or the future of Christmas is a question. So for Hello Holidays, I expect us to go. Uh I think you're gonna see more Hello Holidays. You didn't know anything about Hello Holidays this year. I got a feeling you're going to know more about it. I know nothing about anything. You're going. I, I think, just know I love you. I go. Oh, thank you. I think you're going to see more Hello Holidays. I'm hoping to make it um, very not a stressful thing to decorate your house at Christmas. That is something I believe Hello Holidays can fix. That if that's a problem, I think we can fix it to make your Christmas decorating not something you're ashamed of, something you're proud of, making it easier for you to spend more time with your family, baking cookies, doing whatever you want to do. Um, I would like to see the nostalgia of Christmas traditions and Christmas presents become more prominent. Um, those would be some things I'd like to see the future of Christmas, the future of Hello Holidays. Also, inviting people over. You you do it. You love people. I would love to. It's your, Christmas is the time to invite people over. The girl at yoga that leaves early that you just really want to know because she's just cool looking. The neighbor that always waves at. And now it's a little too awkward to go talk to him. Mm -hmm. But you can invite him over for a Christmas cookie, whatever, coffee. Christmas is the time to invite people over that you see once a year, that you see all year but never talk to. Take the time to invite people over. And I'm going to have my house is getting remodeled. It, when it's, I'm going to have a Christmas party. Damon, you're coming to my party. I would love it. And I will tell the, you. So, like a long time, a, a long time. time ago, I did have this thing where, like, I couldn't, I couldn't go home for th- Christmas, and so it was during a really bad time. It was during the Iraq War and whatever. And I became, I was worked at PF Chang's. I was like the head bartender, blah blah blah. Whatever, <laughs> right, when I was trying to be a stand up comic and all that kind of stuff. Oh, I love it. Um, and there was a guy that like. He was the full turban. It was during a time when anybody had a yeah, turban yeah, on. Yeah. was not a good time, right? Like, now it's not a big deal. Yeah. But I ended up just being like, dude, you ain't got nowhere to go for Christmas. I had this guy over. I had my best friend come down. Oh. I had another random person come down. It was the weirdest Christmas in history. We had such a good time. I, now, I wish I, I could have been a part of that. Yeah, it was great. And I and I really enjoyed it. Now, look, not everybody can do that, right? Like, I think I really enjoy meeting strangers and it's part of, that's my world, right? But I also think that, like, to, to what you're saying is that, like, enjoy your Christmas and all that kind of stuff. I want to tell people, like, as a person that deals with chaos and craziness for a living, if it did not work last year, just chalk it up with, Oh my God, that was such a disaster. Totally. And then the next year, do it again. Like, keep trying. I feel like people give up. They're like, well, we, that was terrible. We're never doing that again. Yeah. Like, don't do that. No, like, try again. Every year, yeah. try to make Christmas a magical moment. Right. Because, yeah, Christmas not my, this yeah. might not be my favorite Christmas this make year, it right? Magical, this might not be. But moms, it's not all on you. You don't have to do it all. Your house doesn't have to be perfect. Your food doesn't have to be perfect. Ask pe- people love to bring stuff to your house. They love to feel like they were a part of the magic. Delegate, let go. Drink a glass of wine while you're getting ready. Relax. This Christmas is not supposed to be a stressful time. 
And you heard it here first. Damon and Amanda, we love a party. We if you a king and queen of parties would be me and Damon, and we are saying you're trying too hard. Try too hard. Just have a good time. And if the party sucks, just try have another one. Yeah. Just have another just one. Just have another and one. Just try try kick, again. Just kick them out early. Yeah. And then you can go to bed early. Yeah. All right. Lamanda, the queen of Christmas. Oh my gosh. How much fun did I have today? Thank you so much. I love it. For coming on the Good Time yeah. Show. I'm I'll still be back. Trying, I'm still trying to figure yeah. this whole world out. Yeah. I just want you to be a co host next time. I mean, you really should just come in here and just help oh. me. It's, it would be a lot of fun. That's a compliment. Um, 100%. I prove I, I, that might uh, happen. And everybody out there, thank you guys so much. Hopefully, you enjoyed the show. Um, the Queen of Christmas, please go and buy anything and everything from Hello Holidays <laughs> because she's awesome and amazing. For next also, year. I'd really like to uh, thank Blake Street um, for allowing me to be in the Sound Lounge. Um, and so, everybody, go shop at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> because why not yeah. if we're gonna plug somebody it ain't gonna be target yeah okay all right <laughs> thank you guys and i love you very much Bye, I love you. well that's our show if you didn't get a chance to watch the episode check it out on youtube and spotify you can also listen to the good time show on apple Podcasts or any other platform we are always trying to grow our planet good times community so subscribe and follow us at good times us on almost all social media platforms this episode was presented and recorded live at Blake Street House Sound Lounge in Bentonville, Arkansas. A social club where people from all walks of life come together just to be themselves and make the community a better place. Till next time, good times, everybody.